Hey everybody, my name is Scott. I'm with the Arizona Hot Tub Factory and they call me the Spa Man. Today I'm working on a jacuzzi. I believe it's a J325 or a 330 uh, that has a flow issue, FL1, and it just will not heat. I believe the homeowner has recently cleaned the hot tub. It's got brand new clean filters in it, but it just still won't heat. Uh, pumps do come on, but no heat. So let me show you what's going on with this hot tub. Okay, so the homeowner shut off the breaker, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the breaker back on. And then we're going to go into the back. It should be trying to start right now. Um, the uh, hot tub should be trying to start up. But I'll show you a couple things. I've already opened up the panel, and you have FL1. Now the homeowner was a little bit confused by this because the homeowner goes, well, I've got movement in the water, my pump works, you know, both low speed and high speed, but I'm just getting no heat. So this is what I'm talking about. This, is, this hot tub only has one pump. It's a two speed pump. It's found on the left side of the hot tub. So when I go ahead and up on the top side, well, it's pumping water. Here, I can come up and I can show you. It's pumping water. When I come back and hit the button again, let me show you. When I'm hitting the button, that's all I'm doing is hitting this button. We got movement. Hit the button a second time, you're on second speed. But when I come up here, Still got F1, FL1. Goes back and forth between the temperature and FL1. So that's how we know we have a flow issue. Up, well, I can kind of hear the motor down there trying to start. Um, it's just not doing it yet. Yeah, if you listen, it kind of sounds like rats knocking. Here's a great example. See, that's kind of what it sounds like when your circulation pump is just not working. Kind of sounds like mice or rats, and it's just, you know, something went out, probably the bearings. So that needs to be re When you look into the tub on this one, it's got the screen on this side, and this side is open. There is no screen. There's a screen on that side. So it's drawing the water from there into the circulation pump into the heater, which it's not doing. Over here, this little gray thing over here on the side, that's the heat sensor. We'll be changing that also. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and start removing everything. We'll get all the water out of the hot tub, and I'll show you how I go about doing this repair. Okay, I'm going to put you as close as I can. If you listen, you can kind of hear that pump trying to start. Listen really carefully. See, it just doesn't have the oomph, and then it gets caught again. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the water out of this. I'll show you what we do next. So I've talked about this many times in the past. The pump that I use is a little giant pump. The reason why I use this pump is it's a submergible pump. comes in about a 15-foot cord. I use just a 25-foot um, hose that you can get at any pool and supply store or pool and spa store. Uh, and like with this one, I'm going to pump the water from the hot tub because it's clean water into the pool. Now here in Arizona, there's two types of pool. Uh, one is a chlorinated pool, then the other one's a saltwater pool. This one happens to be chlorine um, pool. Now, it's not going to matter that there's bromine in the hot tub because you're just you're pumping 300 gallons into like a 20,000 gallon pool. You're not going to hurt anything. And then what I'll do in the end, I'll take and I'll throw the pump in the in the pool and I'll pump it right back in the hot tub. Now that's just something I'm able to do here in Arizona because we have both pools and spas. You just have to be aware that if the pool is salt water or the hot tub is salt water, you cannot cannot interchange the two. It has to go, you know, chlorine bromine to chlorine bromine. Kind of follow me, like for like. If one or the other is salt water, you cannot do it this way. But this is the way I'm going to be doing it today. And like I said, I always recommend getting one of these pumps because I hate pumping out the hot tub through one of the drains that the, that's at the bottom. They seem to do it really slow. You can't ever get them locked and then they leak. And if you look over at the pool, it's already, that thing is a self priming and it will immediately start pumping water. And when I tell you it's going to start pumping water, 
this thing starts pumping water. This pump will pump out 78 gallons a minute. It is worth its weight in gold. So it'll take a couple seconds. We'll go ahead and get this emptied. Meanwhile, I'll start preparing to take out the parts I need to. Okay, before you start taking things apart, you're gonna to wanna to look at what we're trying to find. We need to find the flow switch. So here's a schematic. The schematic is the back door to your pack. So you flip it over and this will have a schematic. This will show you everything that's right here is everything that's right there. Pretty simple. We are looking for the flow switch. There it is, right there. Okay, so we're gonna come over here. The flow switch is the very bottom one. Just pull it out. That's all there is to it. And then we're gonna unweave these wires all the way until it comes up out of the hole. It goes down the backside, comes over here, and it goes to this switch. And then we're gonna remove this clip, this clip, this clip, slide all those apart, heat it up a little bit with a heat gun, and pull this piece out. On the pump itself, it's not that big of a deal. The pump has this one over here, and it has that one right there. That's it. And it's probably just sitting in there. Very few people screw those down. Sometimes at the factory they do that. And you're going to come up back to your schematic. You're going to look for circulation pump. Okay? You're going to follow it all the way over. So you got a light is the first two. The next one is your circulation pump. Okay? Or the, uh, no, the... The first one is the light, the second one is the ozone, the circulation pump is the third one down. So you got two connections, two connections, two connections. Okay, now here's where you're gonna get out your cell phone and take a picture. Let me show you why. You got different color wires, all these different color wires. And if you look right on the board, right here, it says circulation pump. So it's not that hard to find. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to put your phone on camera. You're going to come up here and you're going to take a picture so that you know which one is the circulation pump. It's just that simple. That way you can go right back to it and you can go, okay, and you can turn around. You can remember the black one's on the bottom, the white one's on the top huge pro tip cell phones with cameras that have come out best thing that happened for us spa techs and homeowners that want to do it themselves so when you're pulling these out take your time wiggle them back and forth and then pull them out don't have gorilla hands no gorilla hands today that will break the board but just kind of wiggle it back and forth and they will come out just like so okay now the circulation pump will also have a ground. The ground is right here. So you're going to want to unscrew the ground. Really simple. Take your screwdriver. Wow. Somebody had gorilla hands. I'm proud of them. They made sure that ground was nice and tight. Pull that ground out of there just like that. And there, you've got all the wires. All the wires for the circulation pump are out. And then this. Now the only thing you got to do is you're going to feed circulation pump comes through right here. Okay, when you're doing the circulation pump, you just unscrew the back. There's a little cap on the back. Unscrew that. Pull that one out, just like so. And then you can just kind of drag, drag the wires out. Now there's a little rubber grommet right there. You got to pull each one of these wires out of this grommet first. The cone, see how it kind of cones at the top? That goes toward the wires so that when it goes back in, it seals, so that no water gets in there, no moisture. Huge pro tip again, make sure you put these in. A lot of people I see don't put these back in, bad idea. Okay, when I'm not using these, I always put them back, that way I know where they're at. It's just, it's just easier. Okay, just like that. And just like that, this hot tub is completely empty. That's what I like about these. Now there's still maybe an inch or so of water in there. There's water in the seats. I could care less about that. There's probably water inside the hose that the minute I unplugged it, it went down. Don't care because the pump sits a little bit higher than the bottom. You will get just a little bit of water when you remove the circulation pump as well as the flow switch. 
Okay, now to remove the flow switch, pretty simple. Grab onto it and just move the, uh, the clips over. And these are the, uh, these keep it so that it stays sealed. Pretty simple. Sorry for the movement of the camera. Okay, once you got that done, you're gonna take your, hook, you're gonna take your heat gun. I always use a heat gun because I've broken old flow switches and sometimes the switch might be bad, but I want the plastic housing because I'm gonna use that for something else. Um, sometimes I'll have a housing where I can't see it because the chemicals that were in the hot tub were just so crappy that I just can't see it, but everybody, everything else seems to check out. So I'll just put a new plastic piece in there. Okay, got that like that, watch. make a liar out of me now. Huh, this one's gonna be stubborn. Ah, oh, there it goes. Here comes that piece, just like that. See, once it breaks that seal, they come in real easy. And I'm doing this with one hand, holding the camera with the other. So, just like that. There it is. So. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and I moved the, this hose clamp over, like that and I move this hose clamp over like that. I'll heat this tube and this tubing up with the heat gun, then I'll pull it out. I didn't show it in the video because I couldn't get my hands in here with the camera to do this particular one. I also wanted to point out that on the back or the side of the circulation pump, there's a ground. This ground, even though there's a ground here, you know, on this wire, you're going to definitely want to bond this to the bond bar. There's a bonding bar right here on the side. It's a ground bonding bar that bonds the pack to each motor in case of a power surge so that there's no way anybody can get hurt. So just kind of showing you that's what it looks like when everything's removed. Okay, now that I have all the parts out of that hot tub, I'm going to go get the parts from my truck. But before I do that, I've wanted to answer a couple questions that I get all the time. Uh, several of my viewers have posted on uh, different videos, why do I always replace so many parts when it's only the circulation pump or the flow switch? Well, the circulation pump, the flow switch, the heat sensor, the actual heater itself, the uh, filters, that's all part of a system. So when one goes, the other one is not far behind. Now your filters, I recommend replacing every year, no matter what. But the other, uh, circulation pump, flow switch, heater. Heater should last you a long time. I've replaced very few heaters, but the circulation pump, the flow switch, the heat sensor, when one goes, the other one's not far behind. So I like I, I treat them like a system. So when I do one, generally speaking, I will do all three. Um, that's just how I do it. I find that once I've got it apart, the added extra parts are nickels and dimes. My labor is my labor. Um, so a fix like this doesn't take me that long to add one or two more things into it to make it correct so that the homeowner, you, can use your hot tub and not be worried about it always breaking down or what happens next. So that just kind of gives you an idea. I treat it as a system. You know, it's kind of like tires on a trailer. If you had a tandem axle trailer with four tires and one's bald and you bought all the other four tires at the same time, you're going to go to replace it. Wouldn't you replace all four at the same time? You wouldn't just replace the one tire. So that's just kind of the way I look at things. Preventative maintenance. You know, we're already here. Let's take care of it. And with that, we're going to grab these parts and get this hot tub up and running. Well, we are back from the parts store. Actually, my van in the front yard. I did end up having all the parts. And we're going to get ready and put these parts in. Let me show you what I got. Okay, so here's what I got. You got a flow switch. Now with the flow switch, you got to make sure that the arrow goes in the right direction. And what I mean by that is the water comes through the one tube, goes into the front of the pump, goes around the pump, comes into the, into the, uh, the back of the uh, heater, which is this piece right here. It's going to go, the heater kind of goes around in a tube, and you can see the silver tube right there. This tube comes up, and then this tube goes all the way along to where the tube's right here, comes through this, and then it goes into the flow switch. So the water is going that way. Well, I've had people put the switch in backwards. That does not work. It'll go either way. 
you have to make sure that the inside of that flow switch to where the water comes, it hits the switch and presses it against, against the electrode. If it does not, it will not work. You will still get the same flow error. So make sure you put it in correctly. Okay, so now we're gonna work with the circulation pump. Okay, a couple things you gotta do. These circulation pumps come bolted in, kind of like that. Um, these plates are screwed inside the hot tub. They are a son of a gun to get out of there. So normally I pull the two screws. There's one here, you can kind of see. There's one here, and there's one here. I usually just take these. And unless the plate on the inside of the hot tub is all rusted and junk, I usually just take these and throw them in a pile. Um, it's just way too hard to get this pump out of there. Now, before you put the pump in there, one of the things you're going to want to do is pull these little plugs out. If you do not pull these plugs out, I've had homeowners not pull these out. Don't, don't ask me why, because I do not know. They're again doing this with one hand. You've got to pull those plugs out of there. Otherwise, there's no way for it to suck water or discharge water. Pull both those off. Okay, there again. Come on. There we go. Got that one on. So that's what it looks like. Now, don't forget to hook up your ground screw. There is a ground wire in there. You just use a small screwdriver. You just got to get it through it, make sure it touches. I always go through, bend it, because sometimes I cannot get this tight enough. But you definitely want to bond this motor to this. Like I said, there's a grounding lug right here. So you definitely want it bonded to there, and it also bonds it to the other motor. So we definitely want to keep things grounded and bonded. There's a difference between grounding and bonding, and I will go over that further in a, another video that I'll be doing here in the next couple weeks, because I've had several questions about what's the difference between grounding and bonding. So I'll go over that. So let's go ahead and put this motor in. Now this particular part is very simple to do. I can almost do it every time with one hand. Get each one of these tubes a little bit warm. They don't have to be really warm. They don't have to be hot. They just need to be warm to where they're pliable. Because right now they're hard as a rock. So you want them to be pliable to where you can squeeze them with your fingers. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So when I squeeze it, I can squeeze this. It's very, very, see, it's very pliable. The minute it's pliable, it's very simple to work with. So I can take the flow switch and I can push it in there. Literally that, that's See, I'm able to push that in there. This one might be a little bit harder. I might need both hands for that one. Here, let me kind of hold it up there. Come on, baby. Well, I kind of did it with one hand. Okay, that's what it looks like when it's installed. Then you'll grab onto each one of these with a pair of pliers. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it's not hard. Grab on. Oh, get, get a little bit better. There again, I'm doing this all with one hand. If I can do it with one hand, I promise you, you can do it with two. Just like so. Turn this one around. That one's all the way down. Players in the right position. Okay. onto it, squeeze it. It's literally that simple. Like I said, I'm doing this with one hand. That's all there is to installing that. I don't know how long it took me to do that, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to put it up in the right hand corner how long it took me to do that from the time I installed it with one hand to right now. I bet you it's under a minute. And I'm doing it with one hand. That tells me you guys can do this also. Okay, the next thing you need to do, check it out. I got both hands now. Pull off the rubber band. Throw that aside. Straighten out your wire. And you're just going to run your wire all the way along the top of the heater tube all the way to the back. So we're going to take that, bring it across, and you're just going to drag it all the way across the top part. 
until you can put it in the hole in the uh, fitting that's right here, the black fitting. Pretty simple. Okay, so this is pretty simple. You got these pieces right here. You're going to take and run it through there. Run it through the first one. Run it through the second one. Just like this. And then you're going to stick it through the hole. Okay. And then I'll show you what happens on the other side in a second. Okay, I got it through the hole. Okay, once you've got that done, you got this little piece. This is a grommet that keeps all the dirt and crap out of the pack. So you're gonna, it's got a hole right here. It's split. So what you're gonna do is you, you set, push it apart so that you can get it around the wires. Okay, and then you're gonna feed it into the hole. This takes a little finesse and a little time. A lot of people will not go through this and they just throw this little grommet thing away. Then they wonder why they have all kinds of crap inside, okay? Once you got it done, let me show you kind of what it looks like. That's what it looks like when it's done, okay? So once you got that part done, then you're gonna take the cap and you put the cap and you thread it on. That seals it so that no moisture, no water gets in there. Now we're gonna move over a little bit and I'll show you what I do on the other side. We're gonna move to right here. On this side, I pulled that piece out and I've got this black nut right here that I pulled the wire through. So I'm gonna push the grommet up into the hole. You can kind of see it. Let me turn the camera up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. I know there's a lot of wires up there. It's very, very busy. But you get that and then you take the, the plastic nut and you push it back and then you just screw it back on. I know it's kind of busy, I know it's kind of, but I know that if you know exactly where I'm working, you can actually get in there and you can kind of see there's the nut and that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, then you're gonna take this piece all the way across. Okay, and it come like this. And right here, you can kind of see right there, there's two little prods. And you're going to be very gently, don't force it, you'll bend the little wires. There's two little wires, two little connectors that are right there, and they're going to go right into the holes right there. Now if you look at it, it looks like two horns. Take the horns and turn them toward the left. Because if you look, right here, you got that little white piece right there. I'm not sure how clear that is, but it goes right in between there. It's not hard to do, it's just, it's just it, you gotta feel it and it'll snap right into place. And you can literally see, I did it literally that fast. Here, let me do it again. Okay, it literally comes off that fast, goes on that fast. There it is. You gotta feel it and make sure, you just gotta kinda move it around. And then once you got it, you just push it. Come on. There it goes. I have a harder time with my left hand with certain things. So that's all there is to hooking up the flow switch. Okay, the connections on, on this particular pump are pretty simple. You got white, you got black, and then you've got the ground. Now, this is a 220 pump because it's a, they're, the hot tub's operating 220. It is a 220 connection. So you got the white, the black, the ground. So pretty simple. So the first thing that you do need to do is heat up these tubes. You don't have to get them super hot. You just want to get, like I've said in the past, you want to get them pliable. You just want to get them to where when you grab onto the tube, it moves. If it doesn't move, it makes it that much harder to work with. See? You just want it so that you can squeeze it. If you can't squeeze the two pieces together, you haven't uh, got it hot enough. Doesn't take very long. Sometimes it'll take 30 seconds to a minute. Once you got that, then you set the motor in place and go. Okay, now that we got that. Take the pump, set the pump down. Take the wires, run the wires all the way around. You gotta reach in with both hands all the way around.
Now, I'm gonna pull this out. Once I've got the wiring all the way around, I will pull it so that I can take up the, the slack in the wire and I will get everything out of my way so that that goes where I want it to, okay? Okay, once you got the pump in place, I've already put this one on. This sometimes just takes a little bit of time. Kind of grab onto it. You squeeze it. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you look up on top, right here, I hooked up the bonding screw also, right through there. So you can see I hooked up the bonding screw also. Took me a little time to get it in there, but I did want to show you what it looks like when it's in there. Okay, so now you're going to hook up, the, these are the three wires that go for the circulation pump. Remember we screwed this on a little while ago so we wouldn't lose it. Pull that out, stick those wires through there. You got that little rubber thing that was in there, you got to pull that out. The rubber thing you just kind of you got to run each wire through there individually because they get kind of stuck if you try to do them at the same time. So you run those through there like that. Oops, pump the camera. Run that through there like that. Push that back in the hole. Like this. And you only need it to come through so far because the wires aren't going that far. We just don't want to so see they move all over the place. There again, you can kind of have gorilla hands on this, but remember, the tighter you make it, the harder it is going to be to get it off in the future. But it's not going to make a difference if you have a couple of gorilla hands. Okay, now I'll show you how to connect all the rest. First things first, let's hook up the ground. Now we're going to go ahead and kind of move some wires around. It's out of my way. And it goes back there. And then you just tighten it down with your fingers until it bottoms out and then just use a screwdriver. And you don't really need curl hands, but you definitely do want to make sure it's all tight. And at this time, I would suggest just going through and making sure all the rest of your ground wires are tight. I can't tell you how many times I've come out to work on a hot tub and it just wasn't getting good ground. So give it a little tug and I can kind of see that it is poking its little head out the end. So that tells me I got a good connection. Now, if you're doing this for yourself, this is the time you go and you look at your phone and you figure out was the black or the white on the top. Some people say it doesn't matter. I always prefer to put them back the same way I found them. I start with the bottom one. The bottom one was the black. Now these boards are a little flimsy and you can crack them. So I tend to put my index finger behind it and then I wiggle the black wire into place. I don't want to just force it in there because you can crack the board. You do not want to crack the board. They are not cheap. But just put your finger behind it and just hold it in place. And just kind of wiggle it and make sure you get a really good connection. Okay, that's all there is to changing out the flow switch and the circulation pump. Next, we're going to fill it with water. Just like when we emptied the hot tub, we're just going to do it in reverse. Come over here. We're going to grab the weight with the end out of the pool. We'll come over here. We will gently just put it in the hot tub. Reach down here. We'll grab the pump. Always grab by the handle or the blue hose. I prefer to grab by the handle because I have had the hose come out. And then I just want to set it in the pump, in the pool. I don't know if I got enough hose for all of it, but I know that the hose will hold it where it needs to be. Take any kinks out that there might be. Go grab our extension cord. Ah, come on. You're kind of seeing me do this in real time today. So, go ahead and put that in place. 
and it is literally pumping that fast. Now this hot tub should fill up this hot, this uh, pump should fill up this hot tub in about five to seven minutes. So now I'm gonna take the time to put away my tools. Okay, once I got the water about six inches to a foot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hose and I'm gonna stick it over where the filter goes until the bubbles start coming out over there. Once I know the bubbles have come out over there, that means I've purged and primed the system. That tells me that I'm not gonna have any problems when I energize the hot tub. You can also do it by going over to the other side and you can put that and you can start blowing water into the hot tub. That's why I like this pump. If you don't want to have any airlocks, this is a great way to get the water going through your system before you put the filters in place to operate the hot tub. Once you've got all the water going, then you can just let it continue to fill and you're good to go. Now the other reason why I'll take the hose and I'll stick it into the side where the circulation pump draws its water from is because when I look into the tub, I want to see if I have any leaks coming from the pump that I just installed or coming from the flow switch. By taking it and putting that hose, I'm running water through the system and I can actually see if I've got a leak before I completely fill the hot tub. It's just kind of things that I do. Um, that's the biggest reason why I use that particular pump and that particular motor uh, along with that hose because a lot of times I can prime a system really quick and I can find out if I have a problem. Hopefully this video is helping you and in about another two inches, We'll be full of water. We'll get this up and running. If this video has helped you, please hit the like and subscribe button down in the bottom right corner. It really does help me out. I'm approaching 10,000 subscribers and I think 1.7 million views. Unbelievable. If somebody would have told me five years ago, this is where I'd be at. I, well, I did laugh at them. <laughs> so anyways, I can't thank you guys enough and I really enjoy helping you guys out with your hot tub. So let's get on. Now, once I do get the hot tub up to the proper water level, which I always say is about the thickness of my thumb, uh, lower than the head cushions. That's normally where I fill a hot tub too. I do not put in the filters until after I've got the hot tub up and running. I never leave the filters in place because it causes air locks. Even though I've purged the system, I still don't put the filters in place. That's just a huge pro tip. Fill it with water, get it up and running, use every method you can to make sure all the air bubbles are out, then put the filters in place. Always make sure that the filters have been submerged in water and let them, let them stay submerged. Okay, I'm gonna go energize the breaker and the switch should push over to the side. And we just heard the click, and that tells us that the heat has turned on. Now right now it's gonna say cold, and then give us a temperature, but the red light is on. The reason why it says cold and gives us a temperature is because the heat on this particular, uh, the minimum heat that this hot tub is set to, I think is 80 degrees or 85. So until it hits 80 or 85, it'll say COL, which is cool. So that tells you that it's under the minimum heat range, which is, like I said, it's either 80 or 85 on this particular model. But I know the heat is on because the light is turned on. I can also see that the switch is turned on. And that's pretty much all there is to doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video of how to fix the flow switch. I know I've done several of these in the past. Every, every job I do is different. I've been doing this for years. I've never done two hot tubs that are alike. Some of them are close. And the reason why I say they're not alike is because sometimes when I get here, somebody else has worked on them, whether it be the homeowner, whether it be um, some the previous owner, but somebody's gotten in there and worked on it. And sometimes I got to figure out what they did. 
So that's why I say I don't think I've ever done two that are alike. So I'm going to try to continue to put out videos that help you guys out. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, it's just a hot tub in the backyard that blows bubbles. Don't go crazy. Have a great day.